Arc Survival Ascended has brought a number of different quality of life changes to this Unreal 5 remaster. And overlooking the cool new additions such as a mod list that allows you to instantly install your mods on the fly, a brand new menu screen and UI, new character creation customization, and a brand new UI overhaul. There's a lot of things under the hood you may not still know about. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. First things first, rocks and resources, of course, look very different. In fact, some you may not notice them resembling what you remembered in Ark Survival Evolved and to when they break down and give you your resources. Metal, perhaps being the most obvious one first and initially, doesn't look like the gold rocks that you saw in Ark Survival Evolved. Instead are these rock formations glittered with metallic looking objects symbolizing there's precious metal to be farmed. Oil rocks in particular look very different to the ones you remember at least on land for Ark Survival Evolved in that they're more limestone looking sloped rocks to the big black globs you remember from the previous game. And in fact, some resources are brand new altogether. Grabbing any bushes, you will find a number of different berries, all able to replenish your creatures, yourself, and more importantly, be used to make certain dyes. Building is very different now in Ark. It's a whole new overhauled scheme with many different options, with even placing a foundation able to lower or raise the height to what you prefer. Walls, whilst notably higher, instead of giving you a number of variations to craft, they were all able to be crafted from the same wall. So cycling through R will give you a bunch of different options, allowing you to place down the type of wall you'd prefer, including a very cheeky hidden secret doorway wall. Pillars can now be flipped to make some aesthetic appeal should you wish. Placeable structures and items can now snap into place on a foundation if you'd prefer or take off and simply slide and connect alongside walls to put into your favourite positions and equally snap to other structures as well to have that all in one looking tidy formation that you might be looking for. But what's really cool about this is any items placed on a foundation you can simply pick up the foundation, blow it all and instead of everything being destroyed, it all automatically gets put straight back into your inventory. No more losing structures owed to the wrong structure being picked up. And as you just noticed, well, at least for single player now, any structure you can pick up now. Nothing has a timer on it. And well, that means moving about your builds, traps or anything else becomes a very simple thing indeed. Tree platforms, a handy thing. For the redwoods are now much much easier to work with in the case of snapping walls now snap to all sides of a tree plat meaning you can get that perfect surround that you're looking for instead of trying to work out foundations to get them to fit perfectly and vacuum compartments work a lot differently now able to alternate between moon pool or standard compartments with a range of different options now allowing you to either flood it if you'd like Drain it, flood all connectors, hide the frames, show all the frames, or open a window completely to make it look like you're living under sea and essentially create air pockets in the sea that you would never know existed. The map is very different in R today, whilst still holding M will allow you to bring up an in-game map as you normally expect to, though notably a very good looking map at that. Via your inventory now, there will be a new map button that allows you to zoom out or zoom in to certain locations. Find out exactly where you died on the map, unpin it or pin it so you can now see exactly where it is you need to go to pick up your gear that you lost or create your own custom pins entirely so you want to get to certain locations on the map or pin players or creatures for your team to be aware of tracking creatures is now much more than just simply tracking the dinos that are currently in progress you can track every single creature that you own on the map by selecting to add to POI, 
you'll get given a location of every creature that you've named, where they are, so you never have to lose anything ever again. Speaking of tracking, there's another tracking feature as well within the game, which is very, very handy indeed. Want to craft yourself an Ascendant Torch BP, but don't know what match you need or can't remember them, you can now simply right-click it and hit track where a menu will pop up telling you all the resources that you need and allowing you to fill these up bit by bit and changing them from red to green so you know when it's ready to be made. And tracking doesn't stop there either, adding any fuel to any resources such as a forge. When lighting it up, it'll tell you exactly how long that fuel is going to run for, in this case, 40 minutes and 53 seconds for our chunk of wood. But if we take it all out, it'll tell us we've got 11 seconds left of the fuel remaining. So it's good to keep track of how long you know that forge will be running for. Same again for a Jenny. And speaking of power Jennies, you'll notice there are no more cables attached to this because Jennies are now wireless. Once placed down, anything within range will become automated, including grills, fabricators, refrigerations, anything that uses electrics. And you'll be able to know the range of where you can place everything by clicking the show range within this pinwheel. And it's a pretty big range at that, which means no more wasted gasoline on your fabricators to craft everything you want. It's all within your Jenny and no more needing to worry about wasting all your gasoline in a fabricator. Another new wireless system is water. If you place down a pipe anywhere, you'll get a giant force field around you, signifying an area of wherever you put this pipe, providing it is within water, anything within this range will automatically get that water irrigation. So that means, of course, taps, crop plots, and well, anything that needs water. You can also extend that water radius even further by putting down a water tank. Providing this tank is within range of the original irrigation pipe, slapping that down now has extended a water radius much, much further to an absolute giant area, which we could keep on pushing with even more water tanks. You'll find a lot of different new options, especially with guns, such as crossbows now holding R. You can alternate between the different ammo types to quickly change on the fly from tranks or straight to crossbows gonna save you a lot of time and guns with attachments holding r you can now change straight to holoscope if you prefer for that lovely zoom or change back to laser or change back to flashlight so you can see in the dark with even more customization options holding down q you'll find an extended hot bar that will go through every single thing you have in your inventory, becoming your new hot bar that you can now cycle through and use structures on the fly, especially useful for builders. I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Back to dinos for a second. It turns out babies are now tameable and seemingly simple to do. It's not very clear on whether you need to kill the parrot or not. Some of them I was able to tame by simply hitting E. And it appears they do get 100% imprint if you're pretty quick off the bat. But some of them have some brand new features. Like dung beetles, for instance, now automatically pick up poop on the go, which is amazing. You don't need to put poop in them anymore. It will automatically pick up poop. But you can disable this if you really wanted to. Don't know why you would want to do that. And oviraptors uh, apparently have the same feature as well. Oviraptors allow you to collect eggs on the fly, giving you some really cool automated features that we only saw in mods before. And worth noting, the saddles that you put on your creatures all now have a durability setting. It seems these are based on use rather than damage as far as I've seen. So the longer you use it, the more durability is used and will need to be repaired at some point. And your physical player has durability in some sense too. If you hurt yourself, you'll notice many wear and tears on your body as you get cut and bruised before you eventually die or hopefully heal yourself. Of which you can, yes, zoom in with a brand new camera mode. Simply access via the pause menu, able to toggle off and toggle on on the fly with you pressing F to bring up a bunch of different camera modes, able to change and create presets on the fly to create the sort of look that you might be going for. So you might have seen in some of my previous videos, 
with the right focus able to make some miniature looking animations with you able to snap to certain things to get that right distance and perhaps the most beneficial feature of this in my opinion especially for thumbnails is able to change the time of day so you get the right sort of lighting for the right sort of mood very useful with a range of different options and there's a guide out there at the moment i think made by vino on how to use this more in depth i'll leave a link to that in the description as well as a camera mode for your creatures holding alt will allow you to zoom out for perhaps a better pvp experience so you're able to see much more wider around your creature as you're moving about or bringing it all the way in for perhaps more immersion more of a cinematic experience for your playthroughs to get scared by creatures in the dark colors painting has all changed now in asa no longer can you simply paint your ceilings walls and foundations but pretty much every structure in arc seems to be able to be painted and with their own regions now on pretty much every item you can select the regions you desire for some nice cheeky tints of whatever colors you want to make your own color schemes within your base and lighting has changed as well so if we wanted to change our hand torch for instance we can now simply drag the right color we want on it so if we want a nice red ominous glow on our torch we can now do that and sparking up a nice menacing red aura as we adventure on in arc and it works for lamps as well so if we simply hit it with a paintbrush and select region three let's go with a bit of green maybe there we go we've now created a green glow throughout our base though i do think we was able to do this on ase but with unreal 5 lumen technology it certainly looks a lot cooler uh, with these colors paint brushes can also be used much better on flags now so if we had found a cool photo that we had taken within photo mode we simply scroll all the way to the bottom save as painting and select the desired structure you intend to paint on so in our case it's flag we'll call this uh, RAS flag accept that Exit photo mode and then hit your flag load a painting and then find the one you want you can also rename these as well if you prefer so we can call this flaggedy flag and then apply paint and there we go allowing you to decorate your bases with your favorite photos you've taken throughout your journey in arc speaking of colors and dyes it can be frustrating sometimes when you're making something in a cooking pot or indie grill that instead of trying to craft the item that you wanted such as a soup or kibble you instead make a dye you didn't intend to but with the new cooking pots there's a new enable auto craft or disable auto craft option so for example if we wanted to make a kibble which by the way using the tracking option that i mentioned before is very handy for kibble allowing you to know exactly what you need instead of repeatedly looking up online sources to find and now instead of auto crafting anything we can now double click on our kibble of choice and that'll be crafted not losing the resources to anything we didn't intend to and moving items let's say we wanted to move i don't know a boatload of metal so let's go for a bit of metal and wood and we've just came back from a huge metal grind and we need to get these resources over to our forge which is a mile away well with asc it was a bit cumbersome moving loot but in asa you can throw boxes much much further and they all settle in one place for you no boxes jumping about all over the place so they're all in one tidy area for you to simply pop into your forges and moving loot to anywhere at all it really is much smarter much neater than a base being full with boxes to the brim with boxes all just stacking up on each other and being easy enough to move wild babies by the way it turns out i got this on stream i haven't found one since that mutations are available on wild babies that you can claim out there in arc in this stream you can see this parasaur being 102 meaning it's had one mutation in a particular stat so it's a wonder can you find 
baby wild creatures with even double or triple mutations in Ark. It's a theory I'm interested to see. And lastly, let's say you fell in a spot that you can't get out of. I don't know, you fell in a, just a crack that you can't jump out of. Well, all you've got to do now is highlight your specimen implants, wait for the timer to sit down and simply press E and it kills you, kills you off, allowing you to respawn in a safe place. And that's it. A lot of things, a lot of cool things, QOL additions to Ark Survival Ascended. I hope you've learned something. And if I've missed anything, comment below, let me know. Until the next one, my name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out. Uh.